Oh yeah, hey, how y'all doing? Welcome back to the Major Slack Attack here for a stop for titillating tactical Tamriel gameplay. And this is the Helgen Keep Power Start video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to power level through Helgen Keep and come out with two quick perk points. Now, some of you have already seen this uh, in a similar video I did a couple weeks back. However, I made a mistake in that video and uh, thanks goes out to hardcore slacker Mr. Santa and proud owner of my Skyrim ebook. You wrote an ebook slack? Yeah, I wrote an ebook. I'll get to that at the end of the video. Um, proud owner of my Skyrim ebook pointed out that I forgot to collect the spider eggs near the end of Helgen Keep, and that is that is really important because like that's a quick 800 bucks if you don't feel like doing a lot of forging um, once you get out of Helgen Keep to do a big money power start. And I'll get more into that in another video which I'm gonna call the lazy big money power start, okay? So I, I can't live with this. I gotta redo this video. The Helgen Keep power start done properly. Thank you once again, Mr. Santa. All right, basically Helgen Keep is typically regarded as a kind of a training mission. Helgen Keep is the first major area that you start in at the beginning of the game. And it's typically regarded as a kind of like a training mission that you have to plow through in order to get to when the game really starts. And that's when you exit Helgen Keep. And that's because Basically, Helgen Keep is very melee oriented, okay? Um, number one, it's impossible to level any non-combat skills like smithing, alchemy, or enchanting. There's just no opportunity to do that whatsoever. It's very difficult to level magic skills because either A, the skills level very slowly, such as destruction. Let's swing around to destruction here. Destruction levels incredibly slowly. That's just the way the developers made it. Or B, um, there's just not much opportunity to level the skill because to do so you have to take a lot of damage, such as restoration. You have to take a lot of damage, and um, you know you don't want to really do that when you're a low-level character. You know, take a lot of damage and risk dying, and just in order to be able to heal, in order to level up restoration. Or C, there are just simply no spells available to level those. Uh, magic schools such as alteration there is no there's no race that starts out with an alteration spell all right uh, there's only one race that starts out with an illusion spell and that is the high elf and there's only one race that starts out with a conjuration spell and that is the breton so it pretty much when it comes to the magic skills the magic schools, um, your SOL, you're not going to level these very much. Enchanting, forget it, you're not going to do any enchanting whatsoever, right? So that's out, um, that's why Helgen Keep is pretty much, you know, it's just like regarded as a training mission that you just have to endure and plow through into, in order to get to when you exit Helgen Keep and then most players regard that as that, that's when the game starts. But I'm telling you, you don't have to do that. You can actually power level through Helgen Keep and come out with two quick perk points okay and the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna focus on five skills one of them is gonna do all the heavy lifting but five skills we're gonna level up one-handed lock picking restoration a little bit a little bit of sneak and heavy armor all right and one-handed is gonna do all the heavy lifting no matter what build you intend on starting out as I strongly recommend that you go through Helgen Keep um, in every battle using one-handed weapons because you can level up one-handed very, very quickly and come out with two quick perk points um, as long as you do a little bit of other leveling like lock picking, restoration, sneak, and heavy armor, all right? So that's basically the strategy here. Now, as you may or may not know, um, the lower the skill level, the faster you'll level up, all right? So not all races are created equal. The red guard starts out with the highest one-handed start and that is uh, one handed at 25. Okay, that's one race that starts out with one handed at 25. Four races start out with one handed at 20. Imperials, Khajiits, Nords, and Orcs. All right, all others start out with one handed at 15. Those races that start out with one handed at 15 are going to do really well with this strategy. Those races that start out with one handed at 20 are going to do pretty good. Okay, but not as good as the ones that, that start out with one handed at 15 and red guard is going to have the hardest time with this strategy all right all right enough with the preamble let's get underway here this is the beginning of the game we're about to be beheaded and then you choose your character this is the birth of my crash test dummy maximus orcus an orc i've been using for a lot of these how-to videos 
There we go. Maximus Orcus. Name him. Boya. And if you would like to see more high quality Skyrim remaster strategies and tutorials, make sure you subscribe to my channel to get all my videos hot off the press. And you know the deal here, you're about to be beheaded. A dragon crashes the party. And you go on a wild panic run through Helgen to make your escape. Coming around the corner here, you have the choice of going with one of two guys. Rayloff on the right, or Hadvar on the left. Go with Rayloff. You'll make a lot more money from selling off the gear if you go with Rayloff. Because um, Imperial gear just simply sells for more money. So even if you have this big thing against the Stormcloaks, okay? If you, if you favor the Imperials, just pretend like you're going undercover, okay? You're going undercover, you're on an undercover mission here in Helgen Keep. Go as Rayla because you'll make more money. Looks like we're the only ones who made it. That thing was a dragon, no doubt. Yeah. Just like the children's think? stories and the legends. The harbingers of the end times. We better get moving. Come here. Let me see if I can get those bindings off. Okay, now Ray Rayloff cuts well your binds loose. Your and this is where it all starts. You get a one-handed weapon right here, the Iron War Axe. Favorite that, drop the foot wraps. Fur boots and storm cloak cure us on for protection. Here I'm favoriting everything, flames, healing, and the War Axe. And up comes the healing in one hand and the War Axe in the other. With that axe, a few swings. I'm going to see if I can find some way out of here. Ah, this one's locked. Let's see about that gate. Damn, no way to open this from our side. Now, shortly two Imperials appear. When that happens, turn to the left, run and hide in this little alcove here. Basically, what you want to do is you want Rayloff to go on point and act as cannon fodder and draw all the heat off you. In every single battle, you want this to happen. As soon as the heat's all on Rayloff, go out, join the battle, and start whacking away at the backs of the Imperials with your one-handed weapon. And doing this, you're going to level up one-handed very, very quickly. You will level up one-handed ten times throughout your journey through Helgen Keep. And that, plus a little bit of other leveling, will give you two quick perk points. They already leveled up uh, to 21. There you go, already up to level 22. The reason why you go at the backs of the enemies instead of taking them head on is if you're playing on high, high difficulty settings, I'm playing on legendary, I always play on legendary. If you take um, them on head on, you're going to take a lot of damage and you're going to spend a lot of time running away and healing. And um, that's just going to waste good battle time. You want to remain in the battle as much as possible. So that you can level up one handed as much as possible. Alright, so that's it. This fight's over. We'll level up one handed to 23. Time to drop the Iron War Axe and swap out for the Imperial Sword and put on some heavy armor. But right now I'm just leaving it off because I run to, want to run quickly back to this back room here and loot it. So save on stamina. Loot this Ward's chest here. Another chest over here, and a little bit of chump change on the other side, and Bob's your uncle. Once you got all that on, rejoin Rayloff and put on the Imperial armor, the Imperial boots, the Imperial bracers, and the officer's helmet. There you go. And that'll give you pretty good protection throughout Helgen Keep. Make sure you grab these cabbages here. You might get lucky and loot some tomatoes in one of these sacks. If you can, 
if you do loot some tomatoes, you'll be able to make some vegetable soup in Riverwood instead of having to wait until Whiterun. And for more information on that, on that, check out my how to do perpetual power attacks video. I'll put a link to that in the video description. Alright, so we're coming up in the second battle here. Same deal. Let Raylop take point and act as cannon fodder. Grab everything important and let's move. Dragon's burning everything to the ground. I just need to gather some more potions. Okay, Raylop rushes in. He engages both enemies. Come in in the rear. And start whacking away. Now occasionally, Raylop will take some friendly fire. Depending on how these guys dance around. And we only need to level up one handed one more time to get our first perk point. Oh yeah, there you go. One quick perk point. And the second battle isn't even over yet. So like I said, don't waste a golden opportunity in Helgen Keith to get two quick perk points. Okay, so loot these guys. Make sure you loot these ingredients here. Garlic, Elf's Ear, and Frost Mirror. That's also part of this power start, okay? Like I said, I'm going to show you another video. Uh, the Lazy Big Man's... The Lazy Big Money Power Start. Where you can make a lot of money at the beginning of the game and you won't have to do a lot of forging. As in my Big Money Power Start. Bingo, we got some tomatoes. If you're lucky enough, like I said, to do that, you can make vegetable soup in Riverwood. And don't forget those rock warbler eggs in the basket. Next, we're coming up to the torturer's room. This is where we meet some Stormcloak buddies. Now, I know this is a really shitty thing to do, but this is an easy way to get a warhammer right near the beginning of the game. And that is to attack your Stormcloak buddy and kill him. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's a really shitty thing to do. But often he dies anyways later on. So, it's like, we're just putting him out of his misery. And you actually level up one-handed uh, doing this. Which brings me to another point. Um, yeah, that's kind of a gray area there. But uh, typically throughout all of Helgen Keep, I don't use any exploits whatsoever to level up. Okay? I This is an exploit-free way of leveling up, so... I know a lot of you are going to see us, but why don't you just go into sneak mode up behind Freyloff and whack away a hundred times. I don't like doing, I don't like using cheap tricks like that. So this is exploit free. No cheats, no exploits, no cheap tricks. No, I and save the perk point. Always save the perk points so that you have options when you come out of Helgen Keep. Wait a second. Looks like there's something Another thing I've been doing lately is I always grab this iron sh shield and make sure I have a mace on board, an iron mace. To give me some uh, one-handed options when I come out of hell and keep. All right, lock picking. Always pick the lock on the center cage here because it has some goodies inside. But you should also pick the locks on the other four cages, even if they're empty. And this thing here, this is also a very important part of the hell and keep power start. The novice hood, which increases your magicka by 30 points. Make absolutely sure you grab that, okay? Now, like I said, these other cages have nothing in them, but you can level up by picking the locks on all five cages, even if they have nothing. Some of them have nothing in them. Okay, so that's cage number two. Typically, lock picking levels up when you do the fourth cage. So that's cage number three. Nothing in them, but like I said, do them anyways. And short them. There you go. Lock picking levels up. And that advances your character level progress bar. I now always do the fifth case because I continue picking locks. I continue using power or um, lock picking as a way of power leveling even after I come out of Hells and Keep. And loot bones there for some bone meal. A little bit of chump change. And continue on down here. More skeletons in here. Make sure you grab the bone meal off them as well. That's also part of this power start. Some quick, 
ingredients that you can convert into some some potions for sale later on. Coming up to the fourth fight, fourth fight here, the waterfall cavern fight. Same thing here. Let your stormcloak buddies take point. Let them act as cannon fodder, draw all the enemies to them, then, then get in the war and start whacking away at the backs of the Imperials. That's another reason why it's a good idea to um, kill that guy with the Warhammer, the Stormcloak with the Warhammer, because this will um, make this fight harder. It will draw it out and allow you to level up more. Alright, so as far as looting, um, I always drop Imperial Swords to light and load. And I'll show you later on what else to drop when I lose some more. Down he goes. Okay, Imperial Swords. Then Stormcloak Curuses. All iron weapons. All fur armor. It ain't worth a damn. Keep all the light armor. Drop the Stormcloak Curuses. And Imperial Boots. These all have a low weight to value ratio. Or value to weight ratio, rather. One stuff that weighs less and costs more. High value, low weight stuff. So there we go. One handed at 28. You only need to level up one handed or anything one more time, and we'll get. We'll have two quick perk points. And those of you who watched my Hell Can Keep Power Start video with the Red Guard, you'll see it's a lot easier to start um, with a race that has one handed at 20. And my health got whacked it down a lot. I'm trying to level up Restoration here. There we go. Two quick perk points. Nice kill cam here. Let's go on ahead. See if the way is clear. This is Nork, so I'm gonna pile the attribute points all into health for the first little bit. Okay, so same loose strategy. Keep at least one iron or Imperial Sword. Keep one iron warhammer, one mace, one shield. Drop the boots, Imperial Boots, if you have any. That torturous hood should go out. And then start dropping Imperial Armor, but keep at least one for yourself. Rinse and repeat. You always know when you've collected everything, because you should have nine Imperial Light Boots. I've got eight here, so I'm missing one guy. Because I never drop Imperial Light Boots. So if you want to know if you got everybody, count the Imperial Light Boots. If you got nine, you got everybody. Here we go, nine Imperial Light Boots. And drop one of these Imperial Armors, and that's it. There's a little ritual I do. Burial by fire. <laughs> Actually, you can go back and drop down and get some chump loot. Some people pointed this out. A little bit of chump loot back here if you double back potion and, and a little bit of chump change. No, no biggie. There we go, so I got it this time. Here, there we go. So we got two perk points already. That doesn't go anywhere. Better try the other way. Yes, we better try this way. There we go. 
All right, the spider cavern. Rayloth typically kills the little spiders right away, so you may want to take a chance and rush in and try to get some wax in on these little spiders before he kills them. Although, this invariably means you're going to get poisoned, so be ready to slap on your healing and run away like a little girl. Or, uh, tacti tactically displace <clears throat> and heal up, and you might get some restoration leveling. And then continue to go at the backs of the big frostbite spiders. And get some more one-handed leveling. Even though you've already got your two quick perk points. You should continue to level up. Now, this, right after we collect these uh, Frostbite Spider Venom, this is why I'm doing this video over here. I forgot to collect spider eggs from these egg sacs. Okay, there's seven of them in here. And this is very important to the Help and Keep Power Story. Because I'm going to be referring to this um, a lot when I do a series of build videos. And I know a lot of you don't like spending an hour or two foraging for ingredients. So I'm going to show you another video how to make a lot of money in the beginning of the game without having to do a lot of foraging. And these spider eggs are key to that lazy big money power start. Okay, that's what I call that. And that's in a video coming up. Lazy big money power start, right? So that's it. That's why I'm doing this video over. Okay. I forgot to do that in the original video I made on this uh, strategy. Alright, so we got our two quick perk points. Everything else is gravy. If you're playing as any other race except the Red Guard, you should have two perk points by now. I'd rather not tangle with her right now. Let's try to sneak by. Just take it nice and slow. And watch where you step. Or if you're feeling lucky, you can take this bow. Might take her by surprise. Go ahead. I'll follow your lead and watch your back. Alright, now if you want to do some more leveling, you can toy with this bear a little bit and sneak around it a couple or three times. And or if you're playing as a red guard and you haven't got your two perk points by now, which is uh, very possible. So you can see sneak is up to around the 60% mark. Get around this rock here. Let's check sneak again. Move closer. And what we can do now is we've milked all the sneak we can out of this bear now. So we can run back to our original point here and sneak up on him again. And get some more sneak leveling. Make sure when you run back here you go back into sneak mode right away so Rayloff goes into sneak and for some reason um, <laughs> the bear doesn't attack him. So we push sneak up a little more by doing that. And let's sneak up on him again behind that rock. And that should level up sneak. There we go. So that advances your character level progress bar. And you can do a quick save here and do some more toying around with the bear. You could do some archery on him. Try to level up block maybe, or just go at him hard and get him to hit you and try to see if he'll level up your uh, heavy armor. Throw in a few one-handed whacks there. I was going for heavy armor here and I just ended up leveling uh, one-handed. Remember in my original walkthrough, my original legendary walkthrough, a lot of trolls accused me of not playing on legendary on account of this bear. This bear is not a normal bear, people. Everyone knows that. It's not a normal bear. It's not a normal bear that you meet out in the wilds in Skyrim. Those bears will tear you apart in a New York minute. This is a, a special training mission bear, okay? So that's why you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them with practically nothing and survive, okay? It has nothing to do with me cheating. I am indeed playing on legendary difficulty, all right? So that's that. Um, that's all the leveling we were able to milk out of Helgen Keep, but that's pretty good. Two perk points plus halfway to level four um, in our character level progress bar. So that's pretty good. That's pretty par for the course for a race that starts with one handed at level 20. Finally, there's some chump change and some wine over here in this cart, and I end up tipping it over. I hate when I do this. 
it's like you just breathe on it the wrong way and it just immediately tips over into the stream and then you gotta gather up all your goodies from the bottom of the stream. Oh, bother! <laughs> Make sure you get the bear claws off the bear. And we are done here. That's it. Mission accomplished. That's how to power level in Helgen Keep. And get a whole bunch of stuff to sell. And that should sell for about 1200 bucks if you do my, if you follow my how to make more money tutorial. I'll put a link to that in the video's description as well. Wait. All right, exiting Helgen Keep. And the dragon typically flies by. There he goes. Looks like he's gone for good this time. No way to know if anyone else made it out alive. But this place is going to be swarming with Imperials soon enough. Better clear out of here. My sister, Gerder, runs the mill in Riverwood, just up the road. I'm sure she'd help you out. It's probably best if we split up. Good luck. I wouldn't have made it without your help today. Alright, let's see how we did. There we go. Character progress bar halfway up to level 4. If we got two quick perk points, it would level up one-handed to 30. So if you're going as one-handed, well, you're, doing, you're off to a great start. Doesn't matter. Whatever build you go with, you got two, pork, two perk points to play around with right now. Right at the beginning of the game, which is gives you an immense leg up on whatever character build you are going to start with. All right, so there you go. The Helgen Keep power start corrected. <laughs> done the right way all right so that's it for this video i'd like to thank you all very much for watching and this strategy and many more are covered in my ebook skyrim legendary made easy the quick and dirty dark elf build check it out i'll put a link to that in the video description all right that's it for this video thanks a lot for watching see you next video